No, oh, it's all right, Ludo. I'm here now. Oh, hey. Sorry you have to see her like this. She was down here in the design mines without me, and she delved too deep and too greedily, awakening something. And after investigating, I think we found it. The worst puzzle of all time. Uh, well, yeah, I know it's scary, Ludes, but like with anything we fear, to get over it, we first need to understand it. So come on, let's take a proper look at this. Welcome to Design Girl. So what would you consider a bad puzzle? Boring pushable blocks, matching cards, or something needlessly complex? Well, today I'm going to go over my definition for a bad puzzle from a level designer's perspective. But the first question is, well, what makes a puzzle satisfying? All games have these moments of intrinsic reward, the point where your brain releases all of those happy chemicals because we achieve something. And for most games, this moment is tied to an in-game event, when you finally beat a boss and finish in first place or sell your harvest. These reward moments happen upon the completion of these planned out events. But puzzle games are strange, because the moment of intrinsic reward is detached from anything real happening in-game instead coming from the moment you mentally solve the puzzle, when you know for certain what the solution is. This makes the time between this light bulb moment and actually implementing the solution a little bit awkward, because any length of time between them diminishes the overall satisfaction of the puzzle. There is no second reward moment upon completion, because in the player's mind, they've already completed it. Puzzles can obfuscate and hide their solutions as hard as they want, be insanely complex, but as long as the distance of time between the solution's discovery and the end of the puzzle is as short as a gnat's dick, that satisfaction has a higher chance of staying with us. That distance can be the difference between a satisfying and arduous puzzle. This is one of the many facets of puzzle design that we're going to be focusing on today, due to its relevance to it. Now it's probably time to stop teasing you all and actually mention what game the worst puzzle of all time is actually from. <sighs> so it's from Abduction, which might shock some of you because this game is from the same team that brought us Myst, which has a very intense legacy in the puzzle design space. And to explain why, we first need to understand the environment Myst was released into way back in 1993. The majority of point-and-click adventure games at the time, like Monkey's Island or King's Quest, often involved simple lock-and-key puzzles, first collecting items, then backtracking to the correct location to correctly match items together to progress. The logic of these puzzles was also all over the place, like placing the donkey's hoof in the lemon curd opens a door in another town in another game. Point-and-click adventure logic is a bit of a meme for this reason, requiring such a crazy leap in logic that devolves into simple trial and error. Mist and Riven were like beacons of light for logical puzzle solving at the time. Very little backtracking, no fetch quests, just seemingly complex and intense logic puzzles that took a lot of understanding to solve, but all of the information was there right in front of you to digest. The complex visual nature, combined with the quick solutions once discovered, made the reward moments experienced while solving a Mist puzzle incredibly gratifying. Well, for the first two games at least, uh, but Abduction attempts to carry on this legacy. Each puzzle being its own self-contained masterclass in obfuscation and information gathering, until you reach this one grotesque sin. But before we properly dive into the true crimes this puzzle commits, we first need to understand a little bit of how abduction works mechanically, because it's a bit complex. Abduction is about, well, being abducted and finding yourself transported to a broken alien world, with odd carved out pieces of earth and other alien planets littered around. Abducted, abandoned and alone, you explore these worlds, solving puzzles to unearth the alien's culture, their technology and hopefully a way home. Apart from the individual puzzles you find along your journey, the one unique mechanic that the game hinges itself on is the player's ability to use these devices to swap spherical chunks of the world they're in with another in an alien world, taking all items including the environment itself and swapping it with the environment in another world. This mechanic is super cool with many different applications in the game's overall puzzle design, but now you have the context. I'm not trying to hype this up, I genuinely believe this puzzle is the worst puzzle of all time. So much so that my first playthrough of this game was with a friend who'd played it before years ago and had forgotten about the whole experience. And as I got to this wall, he repeatedly started shouting, Oh my god, I'm so sorry. If I remembered this puzzle was in this game, I wouldn't have suggested it at all. I'm so sorry. And I thought, it can't be that bad. Nah, it, it, it was worse. 
So, where to start with this? Um, so, to put it simply, this puzzle is a maze that you need to make your way through. Within this maze, there are four circular sections that can be swapped out to eventually form the correct path. Seems simple enough, but the only way to truly grasp the utter filth of this puzzle is to give you a walkthrough on how to complete it, and as I delve into my personal puzzle hell, I want you to keep the idea of puzzle reward moments in your mind as we go. Right. First off, you approach the maze, and you realise that you can't go through it, but there is an elevator, so you ascend to get a bird's eye view. There's a button here, and pressing it rotates the entire maze. Huh, well that doesn't help us, so back onto the elevator we go, to the basement level, where you find one of the devices used to swap spaces between worlds. It being your only option, you're teleported to another planet. Here, you can see that one of the above pieces has been teleported with you, so it makes sense that it might have been replaced with another piece. To check this theory, you have to go on a lengthy journey to find another device to teleport you back to the planet the puzzle exists within, and then walk all the way back to it, call the elevator up to your level, then ride it to the top. In total, it takes 2 minutes and 20 seconds for the player to check if they swapped a single piece, and if for some reason the piece doesn't work, repeat the entire journey again. <laughs> we haven't even started baby, buckle up. Let's say that you found the correct piece, but you realised that it's not in the right orientation. We need to turn this individual piece, but from up here, that's not possible. Well down in the basement, on another planet, down the opposite path you need to go down, is a switch on a pole, and this switch's placement boils my piss to no end, but I'll get back to that. This switch rotates the puzzle piece here, but you have no frame of reference for how much it actually needs to be rotated because you're on a different planet, so it's back up to the other world, up the elevator to count how many rotations it might need, back down the elevator, into the basement, into the other world to hopefully rotate the puzzle piece correctly, then back through all of those steps again to check if you were correct, and thankfully, you were. Congratulations, you have now completed one out of the four pieces needed to progress. Now, if you want to either swap or rotate another piece, you have to go through each of these steps over and over and over and over, each process taking on average 2 minutes and 20 seconds to swap a piece, or 1 minute 50 to rotate just to check if you might be right. But let's say you slightly mess up and you put a piece in the wrong location. Oh. Whoopsie poopsie, that's 5 minutes and 4 seconds of your life jettisoned into the void, putting it back in the right place, not even to mention rotation. And why this is such a sin is because, you remember we mentioned, once a puzzle reward moment is given, that solution should come quickly, so not to diminish that reward, right? Well, let's say you're the perfect being, which you are by the way, and you can look at this puzzle and immediately figure out what to do. It would still take the perfect player 12 minutes to input the parts correctly, and any mistake would add 2 minutes to that total time. But it's okay, it's finally over. <laughs> oh sorry, did I forget to mention? You have to do all of this three times for three separate locations. If you add hunting for this button and human error in figuring all of this out, the average time to complete this puzzle is over an hour. Huh? Oh, yeah. Ludo's reminding me that the developers justify all of this in their narrative. This gauntlet and the maze were placed here specifically to slow down an army to waste their time, so in turn, wasting hours. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Sorry, guys, let me translate. Your mum, yeah? Just write a better story! I don't know if this was designed top down or bottom up. What came first, the shitty puzzle or the story trying to justify it? But it turns out you're in complete control of what your narrative is. Look, look, watch. Either make a puzzle that doesn't waste our time, or write a story that doesn't require garbage puzzle design. Now, I'm not trying to point any fingers, but Cyan Worlds knew what they were doing. They have proven they know what they're doing, so what was it? Negligence? Hubris? I refuse to believe that a QA tester looked at this and thought, yeah, that's not terrible. They must have raised this with the devs, which either means they completely ignored their testers, didn't test the game at all, or did it intentionally to waste our time, and spoilers, none of these are good. I'm sorry to get worked up, but this is just mind-blowing to me. I'm more curious than anything. In the same game that goes from perfectly placed puzzles 
to an hour-long ordeal where one-fifth of the entire process is taken up by bloody loading screens, where every mistake takes away minutes of your life, going up the same goddamn elevator and not quite knowing if what you're doing is working because the information you need is on a different planet. Why didn't you just put the rotation button here, guys? This button doesn't even do anything. It just calls the elevator up to this platform, which has to be here for you to even be able to press it. Oh my God, Ludo, it's happening again. Quick, take, take me out, take me out. Uh. But what do you think? Is this the worst puzzle of all time? Or can you think of another example? I hope not because I'm not sure I, <coughs> I can take it anymore. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, Ludo says go to um Patreon um help with the medical bills. See you next week, guys. Bye. Uh.